What's up you guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to Steal the Spotlight. I asked you over on my Instagram stories to send through your style icons. And honestly, as I was scrolling through the responses, I just nodding along a lot. So I'm pleased to see we are very much so on the same page. It was tricky, but I have narrowed it down to seven of the top responses. And today I'm not gonna do a direct outfit recreation, but I thought it'd actually be more fun if we delve into their style as a whole and kind of look at what some of their most warm on wardrobe essentials are. Obviously, I am only covering a small portion, so if you guys' favorites aren't included today, hit me up in the comments, let me know if you wanna see a part two and who to feature. But let's get the ball rolling with probably one of the most common and popular style icons I see referenced, which is Bella Hadid. Seemingly, it doesn't matter what era you're in, everyone is always trying to recreate that model of Judy sort of look, and Bella Hadid has definitely been the poster child of this for the last couple of years. She does switch it up a bit, but some of the things that instantly come to my mind are crop tops galore, denim, leather, boots, and of course, the infamous Jordan ones. Jordans, homeboys gonna like, get it. The outfit I ended up putting together obviously took more inspo from her leather looks. Although she often has a lot of black clothing in those outfits, she does throw in a bit of color as well. So I decided to go for these green leather pants. She's definitely a trendy gal, so I feel like the matcha green definitely works for this. This is actually a good example of wardrobe essentials with a bit of a difference to them. Instead of just going for a plain crew neck white tee, this one actually has a ribbed fabric to it and also the V neck with a collar. Bella kind of has a 90 sort of influence to her fashion as well. So I decided to go for this longer line leather coat. The little sunglasses, of course, is a must have for her looks and also just a pair of Doc Martens. Oh, almost forgot the trendy little bag as well. Like I said, her style gives me very Pinterest mood board aesthetic. So I think overall this definitely works for that too. You guys know I love doing my anime lookbooks and there were quite a few comments that just said anime in general as a whole. There were a couple of characters here and there, but by far the most popular was Misa from Death Note. I feel like I could kind of fit into that category of like alt girl on TikTok at the moment. I absolutely adore this aesthetic. There's a lot of black, lace, corsets, thigh highs, chokers. Oh, also like the long gloves. Sadly, I didn't have any to wear today, but I feel like that is about to be the top accessories trend. This skirt I've had for about a year now and every time I whip it out, I instantly think of her. It just has her name written all over it. Like I said, sadly no gloves. So I actually layered this lace cardigan underneath the top as well. A pair of really chunky platform demonias would look sick with this outfit. I am so close to buying a pair after being brainwashed by countless TikToks. Since Misa also introduces a bit of red into her ensembles, I switched out to this red lace tank top and threw on just a traditional classic leather moto jacket. This isn't something that I personally gravitate towards too often in my everyday outfits, but I definitely think it's a must for her look. Of course, the pigtails are a nice touch as well. There were quite a few responses for different Instagrammers and YouTubers and influencers in general. That word just doesn't sit well with me, but um, by far the most requested, which I'm sure comes as no surprise, was Ashley from Best Dressed. Now, I'm not really sure if she's kind of moved into a different style now, but for me, I will always kind of associate her with that picnic bitch aesthetic. So that's exactly what I tried to go for. It's kind of best described as like a vintage daydream, I suppose. For me, that manifests in the form of thrifted dresses, those puff sleeve milkmaid blouses, frilly socks and Mary Janes and some sort of cute bag. I will say, I think what lets me down is the hair because Ashley always just has like these beautiful, luscious, wavy locks and mine is just there, like, hi. <laughs> I also switched it up a little bit for a part two to the same outfit. We kept the same vintage slip dress on, but instead of doing the blouse underneath, I actually did a silky button-up shirt and switched out the shoes for a kind of sexy black ankle boot. This is more of her kind of chic business, but after hours sort of look. I 
I really don't know with the description, I'm sorry. And also if you wanted to, I think that throwing a blazer on over the top would also work. Tyler the Creator is definitely one of my top style inspos as well. The man really knows how to pair colors. I love the complimentary combinations he comes up with. Of course his early skate culture outfits are awesome, but for me, I love taking inspo from the more recent years with his Golf Wang collection. I feel like this is probably a no-brainer for a lot of you because you know how much I love a good sweater vest and seemingly so does he. And just knitwear in general, really. I thought this one would work perfectly. The Argyle print is quite classic. You could also go for like a scenery sort of setting on it as well, I think would be really cool. But for me, it was the pink and green color combo that I knew would work perfectly. You could either opt for a button up shirt or like I did today, go for a classic white tee in a slightly oversized fit. I thought opting for brown instead of black trousers would be more flattering. And ideally I would have a matching pink sneaker to team with this. I think that would be perfection, but sadly, these were the only ones that I had to work with. For me, it is not a Tyler look without a hat. It doesn't matter what type. I feel like he's done practically everything at this point, but I tried out two options today, either a bucket hat. This one was green. I felt like it kind of worked in for a matchy matchy moment with the vest. Or if he's feeling particularly extra, I feel like he sometimes pulls out the fur hat as well. And I have this one, which is my great grandmother's. And honestly, it's a miracle it even fits on my oversized head because none of the other ones we have from her do. Was not surprised to see Cher from Clueless in the responses. I mean, it is kind of insane when you think about it. I believe that movie came out in like 1995 and it still has such a huge influence on today's fashion, but that just goes to show you what an incredible job Mona May, the costume designer did. I feel like it could be described as very preppy and very feminine. Some of the key wardrobe essentials for me would be mini skirts, plaid, knee high socks, hair and headwear accessories. And also the most common formula when it came to shirts was layering two items, whether it was a t-shirt and tank for her more casual looks or going for the button up with a vest. I decided to go with the latter today to really play into that preppy style that I do feel like she is known for. If you stick to a fairly similar combination of the key pieces, even if you end up playing around with different colors, textures, and maybe even prints, at the end of the day, a piece of share will still be evident in your outfit. I threw on the mini backpack and added the fluffy pen just for that extra 90s charm. I'm not gonna lie, like at least 70% of the responses were K-pop idols and I felt extraordinarily proud. I was like, yes, I have found my people. We understand each other. So I have just chosen the two most common responses, one male, one female. But let me know if you do want to see another version of this where it's just exclusively K-pop idols because could definitely do that. We're going to start off with the female idol, which was of course Jenny Kim. Jenny is definitely a huge style influencer and I mean, honestly, I feel like a lot of the style she wears is kind of what's already on trend sort of thing, but the exact pieces that she wears instantly are duped everywhere. Like I literally say that as I am wearing one. I got this from YesStyle, but I think the original was from Brandy Melville. I could do a whole video recreating exact outfits of hers, but I tried to put together just two combos that I feel like we frequently see her in. I mean, the overall formula is just crop top and pants, but she has like two slight variations depending on if you want something a little bit more dressy or more casual. For more casual occasions, the jeans are typically a more wide leg, a little bit baggier, often blue denim as well. Mine have like half of one leg missing, but I wouldn't actually recommend that for a Jenny inspired look. It's just what I have. I teamed it up with a little crop cardigan set. This is something we see her in a lot and often sometimes just the cardigans on their own as well. When it's time to dress it up just like one notch, I feel like often the pants get a little bit more slim fit, not a skinny jean per se, but maybe like a slight kick flare while also switching to a darker wash. I cycled through a couple of different crop top options, including some that are actually dupes once again from your style. This blue one with the black trim isn't a recreation of something that she's worn exactly, but for some reason the instant I saw it, I was reminded of her. And I think it's because it almost has a Chanel sort of vibe to it, which obviously she is a huge ambassador for. So I actually just kept that one on whilst taking the next step to dressy, which had me switch out the bottoms for this pair of dress pants. 
and of course sticking with that Chanel inspiration I threw on a tweed jacket I wish I had a Chanel brooch to add but I think you guys are getting the overall picture now I feel like a lot of you would expect the male k-pop idol to be Hobie you guys know I love him my fashion king there was definitely quite a few responses for him as well as Tay and JK as well but by far the most requested was the eight Ming Hao from Seventeen, which I was so excited for because I love his sense of fashion so much. Like him and also Minho from Winner. Like whenever I scroll through outfits of theirs, I'm like, I am honestly just left speechless, breathless, and in love. Out of everyone featured in this video, he was the hardest to try and just encapsulate in one little bubble because I feel like he is always mixing it up, giving us something different. And I suppose there's like two sides of his style. One is this like very chic, rich man. And the other is still very much rich, but in a more street style, almost hype beast sort of sense. Now in a previous video, I did more of like that boyfriend sort of vibe with a dress pant and a cardigan. So I wanted to explore his more street style side today. And um, honestly, I couldn't make a decision to save my life. So I just have a compilation of a couple of different outfits that I feel like he would wear a lot of oversized tops and then more of a straight leg pant. Tracksuits is one of them, um, more so in like the windbreaker sort of material. I feel like we see a lot of that on him and often having like a pop of color as well. He has a very nice bag collection. So that was something I wanted to make a feature. And then also, but not always, adding a bucket hat. Oh my God, my fit is fantastic. Oh my God, my fit is fantastic. Oh my God, my fit is fantastic. Oh my God. Oh my God. But yeah, that wraps us up for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this concept. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you want to see more and who you would want to see featured in these little style breakdown sort of things. But thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you around next time. Bye. Bye.